All right, boys and girls, can the best 22 get better? Let's see. All right, let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, hang on guys. There's another side to this story. Literally in this case, another side to the magazine. Our neighbor's shooting a 1911. Don't worry, it'll probably jam here in a minute. All right, let's have a little fun. <laughs> All right. Really cool stuff. That's a double mag there, a double BX25. All right, guys, having a great day here. You guys are probably familiar with our Ruger Charger. Uh, there's been some modifications done. Um, in fact, the only part off of the original pistol is the receiver. Everything else has been changed out. Um, so you guys probably remember that video where we did the uh, you know Ruger 1022 you've always wanted. We thought we'd revisit it and trick the thing out even more. And we've added a couple of really cool things that I think you guys are going to love. Uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank Big Daddy Unlimited for being a part of putting this video together for us and uh, supplying us with some other stuff uh, that you're going to see here in a moment. We're going to talk about this as we go. Uh, they've done a great job of keeping us in things we need. The COVID pinch has just really put a damper on things. So definitely big kudos to them uh, for putting this crazy rig together, helping us out with it. Um, so we alluded to taking the factory um, eight inch barrel and cutting it back a couple of inches and then like chopping the the inside of the uh, of the chassis down or the inside of the stock and then like you know kind of moving everything back to make the whole rig a little bit shorter well it turns out enoch industries makes a chassis system called the deep six chassis system and that's what we have here uh, so this is their uh, chassis system a cool thing is you do have qd point uh, here on each side of the chassis in the rear uh, so you can add your QD point uh, sling or whatever. You've got Molly uh, through, in, or not Molly, I'm sorry, but uh, you have M-Lock through and throughout on the uh, rail system. We've got a couple of BCM rail swells on here just to help, uh, you know, cover those up a little bit, rail covers. Uh, and then we've got a QD point up front here for the forward part of our Magpul sling. We have used a portion of our... Uh, M-Lock accessory slot over here to add a piece of pick rail. And we've got one of the new uh, Surefire 640 dual fuels on here. And this has Surefire's new articulating mount, which allows you to really place the flashlight in a, in a much more tactile position. You can either run it up high and really get it over close to the bore axis so that you're kind of getting it, you know, it's not hanging off of the gun so far. In this case, I actually ran the flashlight on the bottom and then flipped the mount around and ran it up and to the left to get it more in line with our suppressor. All right, this is an AAC Element 2. All right, now we've got, it's not the same barrel. Okay, we didn't shorten the existing barrel. All right, we actually, uh, the folks at Volkortsen uh, wanted to help us out a little bit. So Scott over there sent me one of his six inch carbon fiber barrels. All right, so that gets the length exactly where I want. And in conjunction with Enoch Industries Deep Six chassis, it puts that suppressor in there perfectly. It's actually a specially widened forend that uh, allows it to accommodate both a bull barrel configuration as well as the suppressor. And you can see with the way this one is set up that the suppressor mirrors uh, the circumference of the bull barrel. Really cool. You know, it gives it almost that integral suppressed look, um, but with obviously having the end of the barrel is threaded half by 28, we can remove our suppressor for cleaning, whatever. Uh, it doesn't stop there, okay? Uh, we have a Volkortsen uh, match gray bolt. Uh, I installed all this myself. It didn't take me any time at all to remove the old barrel, install the new roll quartz and barrel. Uh, this is Scott's uh, match gray bolt assembly. So really, really high quality component there. And also his TG2000 trigger system. And dude, I mean, this trigger has a nice flat bow on it and it just breaks like glass. It is just a fantastic trigger. Anything from Volkwartzen, you can't go wrong. Um, I know that he does a lot of stuff related to rimfires, not just the Ruger 1022, but he does some pistol things as well. And um, I mean, man, it's just got, it's got a nice, really, really discernible, just wonderful take up. 
comes to a nice discernible stop. Um, it just breaks like glass, very little over travel. And then on the reset, as I let go, a very discernible but tactile reset with not a lot of movement. Um, if you cannot shoot a Ruger 1022 with this trigger in it, uh, there is most certainly a problem. On the rear of our chassis, we have the Magpul K grip, which is a small configuration grip for Magpul, uh, very, very low profile. Uh, you do lack the storage compartment in the bottom, but they are able to keep the grip nice and small. And I opted for that to keep the, the entire rig very, very tiny. All right, uh, the Deep Six chassis from Enoch does retain the pick rail on the rear. And of course, we have a folding mechanism with our factory um, SB Tactical Triangle Brace Assembly. All right, and uh, <laughs> John and I made a, a, a little a little redneck mod here. We actually took a uh, Magpul QD stud and we glassed it into this little window right here. Now this is not uh, the way that this particular uh, brace comes, but I wanted to have an additional uh, sling mounting point. So we actually acroglassed, <laughs> crudely I might add, but acroglassed one in there and it seems to be holding up really great. Um, this particular um, pistol, mind you, this is a pistol, not a short barreled rifle. Um, this is my boat rig. Uh, I like to carry this out when we are on the boat, hanging out, and this is a great thing to have. And you know, if there's ever an unfortunate boating accident, this is my boating accident gun, all right? Uh, but it's great because you've got plenty of uh, lumens on tap with the 640 on here, the Surefire, great, great light. It's suppressed, it's quiet, and of course the Steiner MRS is holding up really great. I've uh, become a fan of these optics. I like them a lot. They're tiny. The only thing that I'm not a big fan of on the Steiner is the weird battery type. It takes a 1632, I believe is the designation. It's not a very common battery type. I don't have a lot of high hopes for how long the battery life is on this optic, but I love the low profile. And it's, it's kind of a ruggedized red dot, but that is a micro red dot. So it's sort of in the class of like an RMR or an SRO, but I feel like you get a little bit more discernible and usable features than you do out of some of the other micro red dots. So let's have a little fun. All right, we're gonna keep shooting. I'm gonna run one of the 15 shot BX-15s here. This is the mag that comes with the Ruger chargers when you buy them. All right, have a little bit of fun here. I'll talk about these mags in a minute. It's something I wanna mention. All right, good stuff. Rut row. Did it not chamber? It did. It's odd. Bad round. Look at that. Very odd. You know, I can't say the last time that I actually had a bad 22 round, and that's what that was. We had a, a strike and it didn't, uh, didn't set off the cartridge. That's odd. All right. All right, let's try again, boys and girls. Okay. It's actually a perfect opportunity to segue into something that I was going to mention. Um, a few of these mags, I did actually have to fit the mags just a little bit because I noticed in the chassis system, they would fit really, really tight. And that one actually is still a little bit tight. But I had to take a file and just kind of dress the rear of these mags down just a little bit to get them to fit. And uh, some of them required fitting, some of them didn't. So I'm not sure what that stems from. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. And apparently, I guess that 15 shot mag uh, was a little stiff getting in and out of there. Just something to make mention of. Here's some Winchester 45 grain uh, plated subsonic. And this it looks to be an unmodified uh, BX25. I've noticed that looking at these BX25 mags, that some of them, not all, but some, tend to have like a little bit more discernible of a hump on the back from the injection molding. So I don't know if maybe it come out of a different mold or they've got multiple molds, but I've noticed that some do have a tiny little bit bigger of a lip. So that could be something to do with it. Just something to think about. Uh, it is a good tight fit, but let's see how this mag fits in the, uh, 
and the chassis. That's a nice tight fit. All right, let's see if this mag runs. Looks good. Little bit of a tight fit, but not too bad. All right, let's move on to this magazine. Uh, this is more of the CCI Clean 22. And that round that we had a light strike on that failed was the American Eagle uh, 45 grain subsonic copper plated round nose. I don't know, for the life of me, I, I tried resetting it three times. I couldn't get the cartridge to go off. All right, CCI. Okay. Let's give it a shot here. We got some sodas to take out here in a moment. Why don't I take a couple of shots on this plate down here, uh, down below, and then maybe we'll try to uh, take out a few of our sodas. Uh-oh. That is the strangest thing. Light strike. Hmm. Very strange. Let's try again. Yeah, there we go. Man, I'm gonna say this. This is one of the most ridiculously accurate 1022s, especially for such a short barrel. This thing is fantastic. Man, I really do wanna know what it's causing our light strikes. Uh, I opted to you know, think that maybe it was a, uh, a potential round failure, but now we've had a light strike with the CCI Clean and the American Eagle, so. Hard to say. Um, I will mention that anytime that you're adding like performance components to a gun, uh, you're always going to have a little bit of kind of playing around to do there. Um, when you have a lightened hammer spring, always suspect that every occasionally, every now and then, you could get a light strike. Um, I had a very similar situation happen with the Smith & Wesson Performance Center revolver uh, that had a factory trigger job done on it. And of course, it had lightened springs and everything. And Chad and I bought identical models from the same collector, his in double action mode works just fine. Mine in double action mode will do, you know, occasionally will have light strikes. So guys, sometimes that's just part of it. Light strikes are part of performance enhancing triggers and things. And I'm not saying it's a fault of the trigger. I'm just saying it could be. And that's just something to think about. Let's see if we can get through our, uh, our BX, uh, our double BX25 here. We got 50 more rounds of the uh, CCI clean. All right, let's see how that fits. Real, now that's a really nice fit on that magazine. Okay, let's have a little fun here. This thing is just ridiculous. I mean, it's like the perfect little survival gun, backpacking gun, as I've said. Um, the chassis does add a little bit of weight. It is offset by the carbon fiber barrel. And this is a match grade barrel. I mean, dude, this stupid, stupid good accuracy from Volkwartzen, I mean, they make really nice components. Let's have a little fun here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna lock the bolt to the rear. Do a little flipperoo here. I think you guys get the idea. It's the strangest thing, isn't it? Okay. All right, looking good there. <laughs> All right, pack of hornets, huh? Failure to feed. <laughs> All right, looking good, looking good. You know, I, I've always kind of felt like the like the 1022 as a gun design is not without its minor teething issues. Even to this day, I mean, when you get beyond the 10 shot rotary mag you start getting into the higher cap mags. You know, I can't say I've had any 1022 not give some minor issue here and there in terms of feeding. And I know that some folks have commented, hey, how can I get my BX25s to run better? Um, a couple of things that I've done is if you disassemble a BX25, uh, 
Now, this is probably a bad example because this is a double, but it's really, they disassemble the same way. It's just a pair of screws. But if you take a BX25 and disassemble it, um, this upper portion is a casting. All right, you can actually see the casting marks on it. It is cast, and sometimes you'll have some like weird little burrs and things that are left over from the casting process. And it might even actually be a mimmed part uh, with metal injection molding. Now, I'm not, I'm not going down this rabbit hole, but I'm just gonna say that you can pull these metal pieces out of here and it, it comes out as an assembly and you can actually polish and work over some of that and that'll help a lot with any of your feeding issues you might be having in your BX25s. Um, this is the, the magazine that I most commonly use in all of my 1022s. That's just probably something to think about. And another thing you might wanna look into if you're having issues with your BX25s running, is take them apart every now and then and clean them because the 1022 is kind of a dirty system. It's just a blowback and you get lots of carbon and crud in the action and that carbon can find its way down into the magazine and you can actually see a nice healthy coat of carbon and gunk and build up there. So you wanna to try to keep these magazines clean as you go as well when you do maintenance on the rifle as well. But all in all, man, I really love this rig. Um, I've probably got at this point, at least a couple of thousand rounds through it. And uh, she's probably due for some maintenance. So we're gonna definitely get her cleaned up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, my shooting does not do this barrel justice. Uh, Volcorts and barrels are very high quality. And this is a great setup. He does offer these in other barrel lengths as too. So don't think that you can only get the six inch. He does other barrel lengths, including 16 inch. If you wanna do a full length barrel for your other 22 build or something like that. Um, and of course, everything's working pretty well. And this thing is the ultimate plinking tool. So much fun to play with. And the flashlight, in my opinion, just really sets this rig off because this is something you can look for critters at night and everything, it's just really cool. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We really appreciate the support. Those of you who purchase uh, man cans over on the website, we've got some great boxes we put together of gear that we select just for you guys. If you love the channel and you wish to support us directly, that's one of the most direct ways you can do so is by purchasing a man can. You can go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a t-shirt. You can support us on Patreon. Quick thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you for seeing value in what we do. Thank you so much for watching. Guys, many more videos on the way. We've been filming like madmen, and it's a million degrees out here. I'm going to go get this thing in the sonic and clean it up before I melt out here. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.